Howdy, folks! How are you all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to our Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Let's Play Adventure! I believe this is episode 91. Will we hit 100? Or will we wrap up all these quests before then? Or will we go past 100? I recently told channel members that I didn't want to, but kind of looking at how the last three episodes have wrapped up and how much we got done really don't want to make these more than an hour long because i feel like at that point it's almost unwatchable when videos get to be that insanely long but you know <laughs> we might not <laughs> look at how many quests we have left we, we might not but we're gonna go ahead and start a new quest here today i was looking through these and i thought you know what we might as well go ahead and get gondor in the party and do aggie and augie now i'm assuming She'll automatically join the party since I hit A, and she's required. Aggie and Aggie are, like, always right behind you, huh? Not literally always. Hold on. No, no, no. I, 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 yes, uh, I think I ate my babe. Not literally. Oh, I can't get the accent. Hold on. Crocky. Yeah. Not literally, not literally, not literally always. Like, right now, they're off doing their separate thing. I'm almost there. I feel like I'm almost there. How long have they been with you? Oh, I forgot. They've worked for House Vandem as long as I can remember, though. I can't get it. There's something wrong with my nose, I feel like. So it was actually those two who've looked after me most since I was a tyke. You know, it makes sense. Vandem's family's got a lot going on. So raising kids is like way down the to-do list. Oh, dear. Uh, I was kind of surprised by this, but I'm, I'm not. This is starting to make sense why her and her mom have so many uh, issues. Ech, I'm not trying to make it sound like I'm um, some kind of sob story mind. They've got me out of a tight spot more than once. And anyways, guarding me was always, uh, was only a reason they followed me in that prison. Could have been their heads on the chopping block at any point, right? Not just anyone risked that for you. I know I can trust them. I bet if they heard you saying that, they'd weep themselves hoarse with joy. <laughs> yeah, milady, you're too kind. <laughs> too true. Which is exactly why you dags can never tell, hear me? Or else. Oh, was that just a conversation? That wasn't even a quest. I should have known that by the fact that it lacked the little... <sighs> Oops. All right, what do we want to do now? We got scavenging, we got sheet music. We... <laughs> You know what? That sounds like such a ridiculous- Let's do that! That sounds so ridiculous. It's a quest about sheet music. So about this sheet music we found in the city. I gave it a try and it turns out it's a really cheerful piece of music. I was gonna say, how does she know what- Does she play a piano or something? She plays a flute. Her and- Her and Noah both play flutes. It's one of the main things in the game. It looks like it's only half the music is here though. I'd really like to know the rest. Someone in the city will have dropped it. Should we see if we can find who it belongs to? Yes, please! Okay, let's find somewhere with plenty of people and try asking around. Alright, sounds simple enough. I thought about going ahead and accepting all of the quests in one go, but I decided that might be a little bit too overwhelming. I learned that lesson in the Final Fantasy XVI Let's Play, but accepting 11 quests all at once was a terrible idea. Let's talk to Neon. Oh good, we it's Grandad's! We figured it out immediately! I don't know who Neon's granddad's is, but there you go. Great, the kid doesn't even know where his granddad is. Oh, he's probably standing by a bridge somewhere. But there's so many bridges in this city. How remarkable is it, though, that that was literally the first person that we talked to? <laughs> and that happened to be the Boomer! It's not just a description of their age. This is someone we've talked to before, I'm pretty sure. What? Dude. Huh? Wait, where are you going? The man will not talk to us. We came up, we're like, hey, we find your sheet music. How's the rest of it go? And then he just wanders off. Wait, was that like a pause to look back and suggest that we should follow him? Hey, look at Neon coming in with the save here. Yeah, he wants us to follow him. Oh, he's back here now. Okay, I mean, he was well at the end of the walkway there when we started, but all right. The squad pulling up in our matching uniforms. Well, okay, four out of six of us match. Neo and Senna are kind of a little bit loose on the outfits, you know? This is thrilling quest design so far. Just want it known that we have walked clear across the entire city now. At this very leisurely pace, just trailing along behind Boomer, and he shows no signs of speeding up or slowing down for that matter. If we just run ahead of him and we figure out where he's going. Can we wait there for him? No, he just stops. He st you have to stay with him. He refuses to walk alone. A man would not do well on the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Pretty sure you have to walk that one alone. That's Julieta. I wonder how she's doing. We did a whole quest line with her and Romero. 
Oh, I get it! No, I, I got it the whole time. Okay, I know this area. I think we found a kid playing musical instrument here once before. Possibly doing like a little jig. Why? Why here? Why all the way here? Why Why such a pilgrimage? This this better be good, because it, it was quite a journey to get here. And, oh, he's got a guitar. All right. I mean, I can barely hear it. Such pretty music. Manana dig it! Getting groovy! We'll just have to take them at their word for it that it was good. <laughs> I think Grandad enjoyed himself. We had fun playing together, too. Pretty different from your off-scene tunes, innit? Feels a little more jaunty, did it? It's true. The simple act of listening makes you feel connected to everyone around you. How bizarre. Do they? Minata would like to listen again, would she? I'd like to write something like that one day, too. You will, Noah. I'm sure of it. But I won't be there to see it, because we know how this game ends, don't we? And that was it! That was the whole thing! Hold on, we have a list of quests. We've gotta- we gotta check this one off. See, that required no combat. We could have set ourselves to level 1. And I wonder, does quest XP scale with level? If so, could we have just gotten enough XP to like... I don't know, get us to level 100? Probably not. I gotta say, finding quests in the world keeps getting more difficult. You know, we can have a look at our area map. And there's just no question marks to be had here. And if we go to the broader map, I mean, I, which we have not done for a while, and I suppose that if we get desperate, we could do that. We could just have a look at the Atia region. Problem is, like, you, you zoom out enough that you can kind of see you're going to be so zoomed out that you might miss something. But, I mean, this is, you know, in moments of desperation, this is what we're going to be doing. We're just going to be scouring the map like this. But we're not at that point yet. Because we do still have some quests that we can accept from conversations yeah, around a roaring fire with our good friends. If there's a fire here, I can't remember. No, we're all just sitting around a circle with nothing in the middle. Should we talk about some spongy spud evil? Actually, this scavenging looks like it could be about the city. And we're already in the city, so... The city is full of things I've never heard of. And all this amazing tech and stuff. But they seem to have to scavenge things like Levinus parts like we do. It'll be a sight harder than just normal scavenging, too. Outwitting both Agnes and Kevis to get the stuff they need. Not my idea of fun. And they can't leave any trace behind, either. That's why they have a specialized scavenging force. They're elite, but in a different way to Manus' core, which fight on the front lines. I assume there can't be many of them, so the force can stay flexible and mobile. What, like a little secret platoon? Hey, could we pay a visit to Nahome's wetlands ourselves? I would like to know more about these lost numbers. You're curious about the scavengers? A little. It seems like a lot of hard work. We could lend them a hand. They're probably pretty short-handed over there. At least, Uni made it sound like they're a titchy little unit. No, oh, so it's my fault, is it? Well, regardless, it'd be a good opportunity to get to know them better. To Nahome wetlands it is. Where did we pick up this information? Where is this? This looks cool. Where is where is this? Have we been here before? Oh, wait a minute. Is this at the base of the sword? Is this where we first met everyone? Hold on. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no. Wait, no, hold on. No, yeah, it's like right down here, isn't it? Yeah, this is it. Okay, yeah. No, I do know this place. We, we haven't spent a whole lot of time here. I mean, we've kind of zigzagged back and forth through it. But I don't know if you've ever had a reason to hang around. Now, I'll tell you my favorite part about this place was when we first got here and we were so close to the sword. And I was so convinced we were about to get all of the answers I'd been longing for. And they made us do like an escort mission. Technically, we were supposed to be the ones getting escorted. But it took so long or it felt like it took so long. I was getting really fed up with it. Give me Excuse some of me that there. Sweet Ether. Absolutely. We need some of that for some reason. I don't know why. We're not ever going to use it. We have no need for it anymore. Where is that little guy running off to? I'm tempted to pursue, but I don't know why. Do yeah, we don't do restraint. You tell him. We're going to take this guy down for some cruel reason. 
He had a little exclamation mark above his head. I don't know. He dropped a bunch of items, and most of it looks like it is auto-selling, so that is unfortunate. You get a no pawn, silver no pawn. Could be useful. Hey, Mizuki! You! Don't worry, we're... Ouroboros, right? You brought back everyone's belongings. I was at the Remembrance Stones then. So then, the person you were mourning... You brought his memory home. I'll always be grateful to you for that. See, I thought he was going to be really mad at us. Oh, no, he just wants our help is all. That looks like the legs of some sort of very large statue. Right? Like it's laying down and those are the weird feet. Uh, right, we got to go help a captain. Yeah, I remember making my way through here and trying to avoid getting into combat. And also, at some point, I think Shania was escorting us. And we got separated from her and realized we had to go back for her. And it was a whole rigmarole. And I was very frustrated because I wanted to get answers. And the game just felt like it was stalling. Kabata! My favorite type of bread. Well, looky here! The Oru Boros himself! Let's get a good look at Kabata here. Oh. How are you? Oof, that's a voice and a half. What, does she... Does she have a weird voice? <laughs> How rude of me! Rest assured that we'll leave no trace of our existence! I don't know, I'm just... What, how else? If someone says that's a voice and a half, what do you think they sound like? Comment down below, let me know. Bless her, she thinks we're the new recruits, how precious! Alright, so there's some Garathmas over here, and they're keeping everyone from getting a hold of the salvage. And we're supposed to go get the salvage, and if we have to, fight the Garafas. But then I found this big guy, and I thought, you know what? Maybe, maybe we do this. Maybe this is what we do instead. It's quite a few levels higher than us. But we'll just see what happens. I've struggled with chain attacks since coming out of the DLC. I think we've talked about this in every episode since coming out of the DLC. <laughs> I just, I really got into it with that one. You can do a lot of really cool customization. You can get into these really cool patterns where you just deal so much damage. And I know that's possible in the base game. I just don't know how. Two million's not bad. But, like, we were doing a lot more. You know what? I think we currently, do we still have Teach in the party? We do. I just did a, I know we have Teach in the party. I just did a bunch of chain attacks with him. But it might be worth swapping Teach out. I need to change out some of these, uh... <laughs> Most people's... Okay, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, it might be worth swapping out Teach. I, f I hear that Fiona is the one you want in your party. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but she's the one you want in your party if you want to do a lot of damage. I don't know why, but we'll find out. We also need to go get her Ascended, which means we need a colony moo at some point. Should we go ahead and give everyone, like, a new set of clothes? Should we get them all dressed up? You know what? Let's do everyone as a sword fighter now. You know what? It's hard to tell in this lighting, but I think we're a good looking bunch. Although I do think Senna wears it best, as with most things in the game. I struggled to get those words out. I think we're just here to get some Levinous drivetrain parts. And I think if we can avoid getting into combat with any giraffes, which we were told would be over here, but I don't see any. I think we just grab these and go. Are we done? Is that it? There's more. No, there's not. No, there's not more. We just go talk to Kubota, which is a brand of tractor. That's better than John Deere. John Deere's good. Don't get me wrong. John Deere makes a fine product. Kubota's just a little bit better. I don't know if they're as anti-consumer, like, home self-repair nice as, as John Deere. Yeah, probably. I don't know. John Deere's fine. I'm just saying Kubota's a little bit better. Uh, that's a reference that you won't get. No one outside of me, my dad, and my brother know what the reference I am making is. To uh, John Deere's good. Uh, Kubota's that's just a little bit better. Uh, it's a it's an inside thing. Remind me the next time Mike is in a video, I I will ask him about it. Nicely done. Good gosh, she's got some fire, doesn't she? Thanks for your help. Pleasure working with you, Oruborus. <laughs> Another quest just immediately cleared up. That took no time at all. The Scavenger Force. Nice. How many are left? 30 or 31. I think I might have counted one twice. Or maybe not counted one. It's 30 or 31 are remaining. We're not going to get this done fix this. in 10 videos, are we? <laughs> so we know that one of our discussions is about potatoes. And it requires Zeon be in the party. Zeon. Zeon be in the party. <laughs> <laughs> it requires the ZMV of the party, so I just came back to Colony 9. Because I'm assuming it's going to be Colony 9 related or adjacent if it's about potatoes. Ivan was talking up the spongy spuds. We've done a lot with potatoes around here. They're mouthwatering even if you just steam them. Huh. 
Didn't I say they were delicious? However you prepare them. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. <laughs> you look well made up. Not surprised. He got teary-eyed just from eating them raw. Not just that. We can reliably raise a sizable yield without much difficulty. This has put a lot of minds at ease. I think it's safe to say spongy spuds are the key to Colony 9's survival. The whole colony seems much brighter now. Everybody's getting a go of work in the fields. When people are less anxious, they're less prone to confrontation, too. I just wish we had a similar way to reduce intercolony hostilities. Hmm. Don't we? Maybe we should give it a try. Give what a try, exactly? Let's try spreading sp <laughs> spongy spuds to other colonies. Sounds like we're spreading a disease. Oh no, Colony Gim has got an outbreak of spongy spuds. What would that look like? A little potato? <gasps> oh, you know how when you leave a potato out and it starts growing out the vines and they start like sprouting out of it? What if it's that? You wake up and there's just like these tiny little tendrils coming out of a sore on your arm. That would be a nightmare. Then let's get going. Spread the good news of the spongy spud. We can't waste any time. I'll call some friends. This is happening. This is happening. We're spreading the spongy spud disease to everyone. This is absolutely uncalled for aggression on our part. We're going to destroy the world. This is what, you know what? This is, this is bad because all the other colonies probably already have a food source. And what we're doing, we're homogenizing the food source. It's going to be so much more susceptible now to... Uh, like some sort of very particular parasite or or illness that only affects this particular brand of spud and now everyone in Ionios is going to be growing it and they're all going to get blighted and everyone's going to starve. It all started here. Okay, I don't really think that's going to happen. It could, but we know the world's going to end as soon as, you know, we go defeat Zed. So I, even if that started like an outbreak of potato sickness, the world's ending anyway, so who cares? So as we discussed earlier, we're going to spread our spongy disease to the colonies. Oh, here we go. Kite's about to chime in. I guess places with poor w weather or bad crops would owe us a favor. Yeah, that's what he would have on his mind. Surprisingly, Kite, Kite is taking to this. He even knows what kind of soil they need. He's going to go out and help other colonies. He's really come around this guy. Ever since he saw Juniper and got the hard eyes. Speaking of Colony Moo earlier, uh, they're one of the options for the potatoes. Oh no, is he going to fall in love with Fiona now? Is he just like really thirsty and it's... <sighs> oh! Oh, we have to pick which one they go to. I mean, we have to go to Moo anyway, but I feel like we have a lot more going on with Colony 4. They were technically... I think in canon, the first colony we liberated, because we had to come back here later. It's where Ethel's from. It's where Boliaris is. We're going to have to go with Colony 4. It's a no-brainer. That is that is my final answer. That I, I'm locking in. Yeah, because they're out there in the desert. They need potatoes. Colony Moo's fine. They grow flowers and are having a great time. I wonder if this was actually a test on the part of the game. To figure out whether or not we're stupid enough to realize that Colony Moo, being this green, fertile paradise, is a better place to grow potatoes than the actual literal desert that we have chosen. <laughs> this might end up really bad. I don't know. Oh, so on have you been? I've got a preposition for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we call them spongy spuds. I know, that's not... Very appetizing. See, look, they're battling food shortages. We picked the right place. So we went all that way to have a two-minute conversation. Not even. Not less than 60 seconds. And then come all the way back here and report on the situation as it currently stands. They're thinking about the potatoes. We couldn't even wait for them to say they wanted it. Oh, good. No, never mind. Colony 4 wants to learn how to grow potato. Well, now we can go back. Oh, this just gets more and more complicated. In order to make sure they'll actually eat the potatoes, Xeon's recommending we find out what they're into so we can create a, a recipe customized to their palate. Manana's raring for it, so I guess, I mean, who am I to argue? <laughs> we look ridiculous. <laughs> it just... Just saying. <laughs> Just running around in these outfits. And we're back. I wasn't joking. We had to come all the way back. Ugh, my poor growling stomach. Not my worst nightmares did I- Oh, hello, camera. <laughs> that was questionable. The rations barely feel- Okay, listen, this is getting a little bit questionable here, camera. The rations barely- Camera, camera, stop it. Barely fill you up at all. I don't even- <sighs> Oh, we got the information. 
People at Colony 4 want to gorge until Tom Tom is full. So <laughs> what did we actually learn? No, oh, you're not asking for much there. Two, uh, listen, spongy spuds we can do. We know where they're grown. Cured armor sirloin. We'll find it. Two sprigs of deodorugula. I can't even pronounce that. De deodorugula? Irregula? Arulugula? What? I a drum Where does she expect them to find these things? All we're giving them is potatoes. You know, I've been too negative so far. Look at this. They've already got the fields tilled and planted. There are potatoes growing. There's a nice rain coming in to help uh, bring them life and an energy and sustenance. It really is coming along, Senna. You're not wrong. I love Manana's energy. She's so pumped up and excited. And if I never hit A, she would keep doing this forever. Provided the switch never lost power, this scene could run until the end of time. I want you to think about that. I want you to consider this, okay? I mean, eventually the switch itself would die, the TV would die, something would die. But if we had an infinite power source, this would just go. It could go for literally hundreds of years, the scene that you're watching right now. It could just continue to play. As soon as I hit A, it's done. But I could just leave it, and it could just keep going. You could have children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Empires could rise and fall. We could settle the moon. We could be wiped out by Martians. And this scene could still be playing. Just, and Manana would never get tired of it. Be like Manana. It's time to show you the true power of spongy spuds. Listen, Zeon. me out now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Lance, he, he beat me to the punch on that one. What do we do? Do we need to get behind the counter for the cooking? I don't know why, but for some reason I thought it was going to let me do what the cooking. Uh, fortunately, we have everything they need. In fact, we have an abundance of everything they need, which is good. I don't have to go out and actually, you know, do anything, which would be a nightmare. I was kind of hoping that... I was talking about this a lot in Final Fantasy 16. I miss when you used to have, like, mini games in your video games. You know, imagine if that was a little minigame where we had to dice up some vegetables or something. You could say that's a waste of developer time, but you'd remember it. ta da two surprises finish! These guys do not look too sure about this. They are not sold on these potatoes. Okay, no, that's good. Eastman says it's good. He's very reserved about it. That's all he's saying is that it's good. Not an exclamation mark. But it wasn't an ellipsis either. Oh, it's amazing! Yes! They're sold! They like the potatoes! Good! I'm glad you want to eat this every day for the rest of your life, because basically all you've got is potatoes. We planted nothing else. This is the first time I've ever been truly full. Oh, bless your soul, unnamed Colony 4 Soldier C. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We did it. Crusader for Spuds. Ridiculous quest name. Boop! Crusader for Spuds. We never ended up in Colony Moo, though. Oh! Tao's Potatoes! That's different. That's hey, just a different conversation to topic. It looks like it's just a discussion, and I'm not too pressed on that. Kind of looking through here, it looks like we have rumblings that the fort will become a quest. The Peaceful Life will not. Ionios the Strongest will not. And I know that because I just realized for the first time ever that rumblings at the fort even though it's not completed, we only have one of the two pieces of information, it tells me it's a quest. This is also a quest, but we'll never find that other piece of white fog. We've tried. Let's see what these guys have to say about Tao's potatoes. What? It's just a competition to see whose potatoes are tasty. What? Uh, this is a discussion we're going to have. This is a real discussion they're having, too. Look, Senna's put thought into this. <laughs> Manana. We need to set three days aside to figure out which is the best potato. That, that's the discussion. Wonderful. Who is Elis? Should I know who that is? I guess if we do the quest, we find out. Seems like she hasn't come back to Colony 9 in forever. It's Colony 9 adjacent, so that's good. Looks like she up and left in a loveness, so that narrows it down. I think she's probably okay, but it's a little sus that she just took off. Ooh, Tyon making good points. Maybe she's bringing something big back. Like a bear. <laughs> Senna. Oh my god. She really is best girl. What if she's in trouble? Come on. Hop, hop. Let's go. I'm with her on this. Let's go find this girl. Something about the soil on Hope's Rest. Is this potato related again? So I realized that the recommended level for this uh, quest. Ooh. Almost ran into someone. Not that it would have mattered. I think we would have either bumped off of them or phased through them. Uh, the recommended quest level was 60. So I lowered us to 58 just so we could get the bonus XP. But I, I don't really need to do that. I'll explain why later. 
just I, I noticed something when I was in there. Uh, but in, in any case, we're going to head in here now. And we're going to search for Ellis, or Elis, around the Legarte prison camp. Which is just an interesting place for someone to run off to. Oh yeah, here we go. That looks like a Loveness. That looks like an Ellis. Have they been here this whole time? Have we actually seen them here in the past? Oh. Okay, a Nopon caravan told me that there's a good place to grow plants around here. There's also a bunch of wild children living inside. Well, they're not wild. They're actually the most insanely tame children. Almost robotic, bless them. Also, why are you looking for a place to grow plants? We already have so many potatoes back at the base. Oh, look, I thought I could take a load of the soil, bring it back to fertilize the fields in Colony 9. That's actually, that's precious. Okay, so she made a mistake and crashed the Leaveness, and as Rico was getting ready to fix it, someone started to approach? I don't know who these folks would be. Wamba? Ma wh why, why are you here? What? Oh, does she not know that Mwamba's alive? I guess she wouldn't. Does M Mwamba doesn't know who she is. Because he's he's in the city now. Yeah. He got... <gasps> oh, no. This is heartbreaking. What a tragedy. They kind of just blazed over it though didn't they or I should say glazed over like a donut blazed over is a different thing it's weird to think that the mwamba standing here isn't the mwamba i knew i mean he, he is in a sense but you didn't get to meet him again yeah look at that elis always looking at those silver linings so we've arranged to do a little swap it here with the folks from the city the it's just not true all we can do now is to give him the freedom to lead the best life he possibly can Okay, I mean, I was in the middle of saying something. We've made a agreement with the- smell so rich here. <laughs> Shut up, I'm trying to talk! We've made an agreement, we're gonna give them- We're gonna go collect things for them, and in exchange, they're gonna give us some parts. Actually, they were just gonna give us the parts, and then we volunteered to go help- Hacked, why are you here? Everyone is here, why- why is everyone here? Hey, that's the thing, for the stuff! That takes care of that. It's one of my favorite Senna lines, that's the thing for the stuff, and she says it with so much, like, positive energy and joy. Did I get out what I was trying to say earlier? The city volunteered to give us the parts, and we volunteered in exchange to help them collect some resources. It's not an actual trade, because they were just gonna give us the stuff for free, but, you know, you know how it is. We, we can't just accept charity. We have to throw ourselves at the opportunity to help them. I'll be honest, I haven't thought about Mwamba once. Since we got past that bit in the story with him in it. Uh, you know, finding out that he was he was brought back. But everyone around here is talking about him. Elis in particular, we just picked up some stuff from her and she's going on about how much she misses him. And how sad she was that he died. And how she crashed her loveness because she was thinking about him. Which is interesting. Speak of the devil, there he is! I wonder why his memories haven't come back. Like Miyabi's. Yeah, that's actually a good point. No one else... No, well, Ethel and Kamarave's memories didn't really come back. What they kind of did, sort of, I actually don't remember perfectly. I think they have an inkling of who each other is and, and who we are. Or did they have a full-on... Well, Miyabi remembers. Miyabi... Mi Why does Miyabi remember? Did Miyabi never actually die? Yeah, well, when you think how they died, that's probably for the best. Oh, I mean, Tyan makes a good point. I think Miyabi's came back, though, because there was a big... Heartfelt, tear-filled, emotional, heart-jerking, like, me all be, it's me, sort of a moment. Or maybe I don't remember the exact details of how the plot went down, but that's basically what happened. Maybe we played a song for her and she remembered? I could just go watch episodes of my own Let's Play. Yeah, you should get back to Colony 9. You should have told everyone what you were doing. Before you go, though, yeah, why not go have a chat with Moab? That's what I was going to say. Me and Uni, we're like synced up here. It's fine, he doesn't know me anyways. And it would just make me sad. I mean, speak the devil, here he comes. He's really good about that. I got to see him smile one more time. That's enough. Boy, this is like... I mean, think about it. If it was the Mwamba I knew, he'd have hit his time long ago. Right! I'm just glad that this time, I get to say goodbye properly. Hey, you going already? Yep. I've got my own stuff I need to get be, be getting back home. Ah, shame. You're from the same colonies, no one the others, right? Right. 
I guess I'll see you next time then. You will? Yeah, me and Hacked have been talking about taking a trip when things have calmed down. Seeing the world. And we decided our starting point would be Colony 9. Ooh. Guys want to tell him about how the world's going to end? You did? Then I'll be waiting to say hi when you come. Good. See you then, Illus. See you, Mamba. To be fair, we don't know how much time passes bef between defeating Zed at Origin and restarting the world. It feels like a hot minute passes. I might be wrong on that. It could be one thing immediately leads to the other. A chance encounter. Is that going to be under A or C? It's under A. A chance encounter. I don't think it's immediate, though, because he's uh, no, is at like a tower all of a sudden and he throws his sword away, which is along. symbolic because he can just resummon it. But that, uh, maybe there was like a minute, maybe a good year passed in between those two events and, and everyone did get to go travel the world. What are we supposed to do now? Are there any more quests up here at Colony 9? If there are, I don't see them, but there might be little discussion bubbles we need to go look for. You know what I was thinking about doing, though, and we even talked about it throughout most of this episode. I'm gonna go back to Colony Moo, which I think is right who? There's a bunch of there's a bunch of little points of interest, but I think those are just things you can look at. We're gonna go back to Colony Moo, though, and we're gonna do whatever we can to get the Ascension quest started. Oh, okay, no, it's a poster that we can look at. That's weird. That might spur on the next quest. Are these over here posters as well? At the barracks? Apparently we have never been here before. There are posters here. What are these posters all about? I guess we'll find out a next time. Until then, thank you folks for watching. God bless you. I'll see you later. Goodbye.